have our seats. The heavens love that joyful noise. Because we are shouting for our God. I welcome each one of you to church today. This is Set Free Life Church. We love the Lord. We love the visitors. And we only teach and teach the only and only truth. And the only truth which is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Some of it may not be sweet for the ears. Some of it may not be good for the ears. But it's good for the soul. Amen. Amen. So I encourage us to take up, even if the ears mean find it not so sweet. The soul will be satisfied. Amen. Amen. My name is Rose Mbubi. For those that may not know me, I'm a member of this church. I love the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful for the Lord. This week he he renewed my life contract. He added me another year. I'm really so grateful to him. I'm really, really so grateful. Because many of you do not know my story. But I, I would be dead by now if it wasn't for the grace of the Lord along the way when I was growing up. But I thank the Lord that he knew that at a time like this I'll be standing before you and he preserved me. I thank him so much. I'm, great, I'm grateful to him that he has given me an opportunity to stand before you. It's not that I'm the most qualified, the most worthy, but by the grace of the Lord. Because the Bible tells us that he's the one that qualifies us. Amen. Amen. So I also thank our pastors for loving us, taking care of us, I think we can clap for that. We really have good pastors. They take time to check on us. They visit us. For us in COVID, we didn't lack anything. Food was at our table. Our pastors made sure we have food. They made sure we pray. They would visit every home and would have an altar. So we didn't miss anything. And also the other thing that I thank the Lord. That we have a free pastor. You can approach him any time. You don't have to make an appointment in four years, three years, three months. He doesn't have bodyguards. You can approach him at any time. So in case you need counseling, come. Amen. Amen. So uh, last Sunday, Sunday day, I had an opportunity still to share. And uh, I shared about the transformational power of God's word. And we looked at how this word transforms us. And we saw how important this word is. 
we saw that it, it, it strengthens, strengthens our faith. It guides us. It helps us not to fall into temptation. Just a few for those that we are not around. Mm-hmm. We saw a lot that the word can do in us. And we saw it as a key to our transformation. And I would like to urge everyone, let's go into the word. Because there is no any other way we shall learn our God. There is no any other way we shall learn the mighty things that he can do. All his greatness if, we, if we've not dwelt in the word. So we had that last, uh, last Sunday. And we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that, that in any man in Christ is a new creature. The old has gone. Behold, everything is new. Everything is new. And I said last week that the moment we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, the heavens start counting on us. Amen. Amen. Heaven, the heavens start looking at us as people that are moving in transformation. We are expected to be in the likeness of Christ because he's the one that we follow. He's the one that we look unto. So that was basically the message last week. Transformation through the word. So let us go and read the word. Because it is going to transform us. Because when we read in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, it says that you are once in darkness. But now you are you are li- you are light in the Lord. Therefore, live as children of the light. So, so the heavens expect us to live as children of the light. And now I believe that we know the key to transformation. It is the sword, the word of God. And if we get hold of it, then we shall be good to go. We shall be those mature Christians. We shall be those that the Lord says good servant. Amen. Amen. That is just a brief for last, for, for last week. I'm doing so because I'm, I'm, I'm linking it to the message that we are going to have for today. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this afternoon. As your children, O God, we open our hearts that you will feed us, that you teach us your ways. Holy Spirit, we welcome you, the best teacher, that you come and teach us. Father, I decrease that you may increase in me. You may speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I think even those that we are not around have picked up. We had transformation through the word. And now that we've learned how to be transformed, what do we need to have our, life, our lives transformed? Now we are looking at how to sustain 
katutu nulide butia we tukuma okuchusi waku no kwetufunye exactly amen how do we sustain this transformation tukuma tutia okuchusi waku no kwetufunye how do we keep being the children of the light that tusigala tutia ngaba na be chitangala how do we keep as those children that the lord is proud of tuku tusigala tutia ngaba bana mukama be yenyumirizam that is my topic today gwe mulamwa gwangerero and my topic is simple ero mulamwa gwange mwangu dalala it is called purity guiti bo bulongo fu purity obulongo fu tell your neighbor purity ugambo yonti obulongo fu hello manji purity obulongo fu and biblically purity means mu bible obulongo fu chitegeza being morally clean okuberanga oli mulongo fu muneisa without blemish awatali kakunizo konna in other words when the lord looks at you musngeri ndala ntikatonda wa kutunulira you without spot or wrinkle toina lufunyiro obabala and that is the church that the lord is coming for atera ye kanisa mukama jako mawo kunona by purity bwenjogera ku bulongo fu i mean us having a clean heart ntegeza fo kubera ne mitima emiyonjo without any impurities omutali kachicha ya de not mixed with any other thing that is ungodly being separated from anything that defiles us praise the lord we are looking at how to sustain a transformed life obulamu obuchusidwa of course when we give our lives to christ chitufu wetu obulamu bwa feri kristo so many things change bintu binje bichuka and so many things are expected to change era binji byatusubira okuchuka we become new tufuka abapya and some of us strive hard to walk the right path abamu tulafubana nyo okutambulira mu kube tufu so how do how do we sustain that echo tuchikumye tutia that is why i'm bringing purity yes ongarachi ndeto mulama ogobulongofu kama yebazibwe praise the lord let us read uh, ephesians 4:8 katusoma ba efeso nya munana sorry philippians 4:8 not ephesians ba filipo nya munana philippians 4:8 Ba Filipi, ba Filipi nya munana. Philippians 4:8. Ba Filipi nya munana. Let me read. Kansome. Finally brethren. Echen komerero abo Luganda. Whatever things are true. Obanga waliwe byamazima. Whatever things are honest. Ebisanira ekitiwa byonna. Whatever things are just. Whatever things are pure. Ebirongofu byonna. Whatever things are lovely. Ebyagalibwa byonna. Whatever things are of good report. Ebisimibwa byonna. If there is if there be any virtue. Obanga bulunji bonna wabawo era nga waliwo And if there be any praise. Bwabawo etendo lyonna. Think about these things. Mulowozenga ku bintu bino. Philippians 4:8. Aba Filipu, aba Filipi esule yokuna olunyo ro munana. Let me read it again. Kanzire munso. Finally brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue If there be any praise think about these things. Echenko menero abo Luganda obanga waliwe byamazima byonna ebisanire kitiwa byonna ebyobutukirivu bonna ebirongo fu byonna ebyagalibwa byonna ebisimibwa byonna nga waliwo obulunji era obanga waliwo etendo ebyo mubirowozenga. Okay now when you look at this scripture 
gives us two things. Partly it gives us a definition of, of, of purity. And it also gives us a practice of purity. It says whatever things are true that is what you should think about. So I want us to, 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 to reflect in our hearts. Are we truthful to ourselves? Are we truthful to ourselves? And after we've, we've been truthful to ourselves, have we been truthful to others and our Lord? Because if we are not truthful to ourselves, then we cannot be truthful to others. Because it begins with us. Many other times, we set up certain things. We say, I will do this and this. And no one is there when you're setting such a target. I was giving the morning service people an example. Or like most of the times when we are in frustration, we get so committed and even promise the Lord. And we, 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 the promise is, is within us. Maybe God, if you give me this job, I'll give you all my first salary. God, if my crops, if, if really, if I get a good harvest from my crops, I'll take the first fruit. Obviously, no one will know that you promised that. And when things happen, and you're like, I think the Lord is also aware things are not okay. Then you're like, well, I will take, I will not take. The other heart is saying, take, take. Then eventually you give in, you're like, ah. After all you say, I even didn't tell pastor I would bring the first fruit. Let me stay with it. So that means you've not been truthful to yourself. You've not been truthful to others. And even to your God. Because maybe the first, we were supposed to eat that first. That was supposed to be maybe pastor's supper for that day. And that is what the Lord had prepared since you had said it in your heart. And since pastor loves cassava so much, you are supposed to enjoy the cassava for that day. And it didn't happen. Whatever things are honest, those are the things that we should think about. Are we honest to ourselves? Are we honest to others? Are we honest to God? Praise the Lord. I want us to think about it. When you say, God, I'm giving you uh, two weeks of fasting, do we fulfill? Or oh, in the middle there, you say, you know, one time I, I, I moved in a field with a colleague. And uh, they are not they are they are they belong to the other group. They are not uh, born again. And so they had started their late period. And this and uh, the place we had gone to was a hotel. The client we had gone to visit is a very big hotel. And breakfast is from there up to here. And the, the bad thing or the unfortunate bit of it is that these guys brought us to have the meeting near the kitchen. 
Acheche naku. Oluchiko nebalu letera dala kumpi nefumbi da wali akawo. And said Vanna, you can order for anything. It is okay. Then I told that. Oli mukusiva. Nenzi juki zono. Aren't you fasting? And one of the guys told, told them, for, for your first, you know our culture, you can break the fast and then you repay. Then how many gamba voebia for be man yo so all oxy buluka no lusasura tell uvanyuma. And that is what she did. The fast was broken that day. So I don't know whether she was honest to herself and to her God. And I think her fasting ended on that day. And she has just moved a few days. Hello. We are learning about purity. <laughs> Whatever things are just in all your dealings, are you just to everyone? Even to those that do not deserve. Praise the Lord. Amen. Eh, whatsoever thing is lovely, whatsoever things are pure, those are the things that we should think about. And that is what will bring purity in our lives. Praise the Lord. Purity is very important in our Christian walk. Because it is the one that is going to sustain us. Being in this perverse generation, things seem to be upside down. You look at the generation and you're like crying. Someone is 60 years, that is when they realize they should supposed, they're supposed to be a woman. I read about that gentleman and I mean I almost cried. I read about that man. Person who has children. And now they have realized they are supposed to be a what? A woman. And by the way, he has been transformed into a woman. A real woman. He's now a woman. Even the names changed. At that, at, at 60 years. So we are moving in a, in, in a generation where someone, when for them they, they, they move in a skimpy attire, that is when they think they are smart. So it is up to you. You find your level. Put yourself in the, in the lane you're supposed to belong. Praise the Lord. This is the world that we are in. Things are upside down. However, they are not new. They have been there. Generation after generation. So it takes the pure to stand. It takes the pure to resist. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is very important in our Christian walk that we walk in purity. Reason being that when we look at purity, it is, the only, it, is, it is one of the things that can take us in the holy of holies. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because when we read Matthew 5.8, he says that blessed are the pure in heart. They, they are the only ones to see God. They will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart. They are the only ones to see God. They are the only ones to see God. Praise the Lord. So the question that comes to us, how are, how are our hearts? What is the state of your heart? 
What is hidden in there? We need purity. Praise the Lord. It is the only thing that is going to help us sustain in this world. If you are to stay transformed, then you need purity. You need a clean heart that they have talked about. Meaning we should work on our hearts. Because no one can look unto your heart apart from the Lord. I will not know the bitterness that is in your heart unless you know it. I will not know the pride that is in your heart unless you, you say it out. We need to take our hearts to the Lord. We need to walk in purity. Because it is going to help us move a transformational life. Praise the Lord. But we thank the Lord that there is nothing too hard for him. Whether bitterness, whether unforgiveness, whether pride, be it last, he can work on them. Let us purpose to work to move in purity. It is not easy as, as we say being our human nature but the grace is sufficient. It is there to help us. Amen. Amen. So it is only purity that will help you and I to bear good fruits. The fruits that the Lord requires of us. Pastor has just been telling us you are either number zero, number one, None of us wants to be zero. So if we don't want to be that, then we are going to bear good fruits. And this is only possible when we live a pure life. When we walk in purity. Let us read Matthew 7. Chapter 6. Sorry, Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 to 17. Okay. It says, You will know them by their fruits. Bible Gamba Muruliba Tegeranga Kubibalabia. Do many gather do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from the thatos? Amen. Amen. That you will know them by their what? Their, their fruits. If we move a pure life, it is what is going to transform us. And we shall bear good fruits. And wherever we are, they will know that we confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Because they will see the good fruits out of us. They will see the kindness that comes in us. They will see the joy despite whatever you're going through. And then they they will wonder. How does this believer do it? But the Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is my strength. So even though you're going through hard time, you're able to stand like Job. And then you're able to know that I came with nothing. I'm going to go with nothing. Even, even though things are like this, may the name of the Lord be praised. 
It takes walking in purity. Verse 17 says that even, even so, every good tree bears good fruit. But bad trees bear bad fruits. So when we walk in purity, we shall be able to bear those good fruits. Praise the Lord. It is purity that is going to help us detect any fault in our lives. And steer us to righteousness. Amen. That is why the, the Bible says that the righteous falls how many times? But they still do what? Yes. Because there is the Holy Spirit that is helping them. Because the God knew that we would be orphans without this Holy Spirit. And decided to leave this the Holy Spirit behind to lift us in those moments. And the Lord can see you that you're really struggling to walk in purity and he can never leave you to walk alone. Praise the Lord. We need purity. Tell your neighbor purity. It is the one that is going to help you live a transformed life. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us that any, any tree, any branch that does not bear fruit, where is it thrown? Bible In fire. Your good students. And I was giving an example of, of in a morning service that just like God, also farmers, we are farmers. When, you, when they get their harvest, they separate them according to quality. The nice, the very, very good tomatoes, they spare them maybe for export. Then they will have the next level for the supermarkets. Then they will have those for Kadala. Then they will also have fudge. The ones who don't have money will sort the fudge. So that is how we are also. We want to be those ones for export. It is only purity that is going to help you guard your mind. Our minds are so open to so many things. They determine the darkness and the light in us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our minds. And the are our minds are entrance for the darkness that is in us. They determine the darkness that is in us or the light that is in us. And the are the light Praise the Lord. Amen. Because what we see with our eyes feeds into our mind. What we listen with our ears feeds into our minds. Amen. Amen. And then you realize if, if, if purity has not taken you over, that is when you find Christian songs bore you. But when they put on that very song, I, I heard it yesterday. Yes. And you're like, wow, Siri Rejula. 
It takes, it takes you walking in purity. Chitwala gwengo tambuli da mubu tu kiriv. Oba mubu longo. I don't work, work in a Christian organization. And so, um, s- some of the times people put on and you're like, has, has someone come to work? Are they going to a f- f- disco? Or even the disco, they are more decent. And then the, you hear comments from the men. Vitamins for the eyes. <laughs> so in this perverse generation, it is only purity that can help you to guard your mind. That when you see such a thing, the other friends will tell you, don't let your wuzu leave you. I think wuzu is, is a state of, uh, eh? yes, a sort of cleanness, yes. Like, like uh, when you see sa- someone that is dressed in a skimpy attire, you're not moved, you're the same. It takes purity. So we need purity to guard our minds. That when you listen to circular music, it doesn't fill your mind the whole day. You're like, you hear a person, you hear a person, you hear a person, you know? When you're pure, you can't keep recalling the songs that the, 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 the Holy songs. Spirit helps you. And very, very fast it reminds you you're not supposed to do this. That is why when we look like a person like, like Joseph, the devil put an opportunity for him. It is the, 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 the king's wife you'll have all the privileges everything you, you mean you'll have a good life but there's purity in him and the Holy Spirit reminded him it is time to take off here you just flee one message you were smart yesterday are you sure for real you just block delete it takes the holy spirit but if you start saying hey, are you for real then you have started going amen Amen. Proverbs 23.7 tells us that for, for as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. So if, 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 if uh, in our minds we, we are not thinking right, rightly, if, if our minds are full of lust, if our minds are full of bitterness, if our minds are full of so many things, it is hard to stay a pure life. But, and by the way, the Lord looks at the mind. Let me read for you Genesis 6 5. Genesis 6 5. Genesis 6 5. Genesis 6 5. Let me read for you Genesis 6 5. Genesis 6 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was, was great in the earth. And every imagination of their thoughts in his heart was only evil continually. So if your mind is corrupted, it can lead to your destruction. When the Lord saw that people's minds were full, were really corrupted with evil, 
He just decided to wipe away all that generation. I encourage us to pursue purity. It is only purity that will give you a new heart. A heart that is not greedy. A heart that is, 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 is that loves the Lord. A heart that is honest. A heart that is faithful. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is only purity. When 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 David fell. He remembered one thing and asked God for a pure heart. Because he knew that pure heart is the entrance to heaven. Praise the Lord. He knew that the pure heart is the heart that is going to lead him to heaven. Tell your neighbor you need a pure heart. You need a pure heart. It is, it is the only thing that is going to help you sustain the transformation. Now it is only purity that is going to help you live a life that is of accountability. We live in a life, a life where we do not want to be accountable. When we, we, we don't appear and they're like, well, we two weeks at church. We've not been seeing you. And then you're like, these ones are also following us. They are witch hunting us. But accountability. When we look in the Bible, we saw that we see that God had a time when He was meeting Adam. So just imagine the Lord has prepared to meet you today. And then He does not find you. And then He does not find you. And then you have no accountability. Hello. Purity. It is that that is going to help us live a transformed life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Many of the times, like for the marriage, they are like, they don't ask a man where he is coming from. Really? Dala. Is that accountability? Your spouse, your spouse should know where you're going. Your wife should also know where your, your husband should also know where you're going. Because when you are accountable to people, when you are accountable to yourself, and you're also accountable to God, that is when you can be able to live a pure life. So purity is one is one thing that is going to help you live a transformed life. Amen. Amen. It is purity that is going to help you have self-control. That when you're entrusted with so many things, you're not tempted to touch. Because you have self-control within you. When you move on the streets and people are dressed in their own way, you're not moved. Because within you there is purity. Hello? It is purity that is going to help us. It is purity that is going to help us live a sinless life. 
Mukama eva ziwe. Praise the Lord. I see my, my life, my time is first spent. But it is only the pure heart that is in you that is going to help you love what the Lord loves. You see these things of Christianity bore so many people. So read the word, read the word, read the word, move here, move. And you're like running. Oh, the word is very boring. Whenever I read, I just doze. When they annoy me, I shouldn't respond. Hey, I should move on to this other side. But when you have purity within you, it is going to help. It is going to help you sustain this walk. Walk it as a transformed Christian. Praise it is the only purity that is going to help us. It is only purity that is going to help us please our Lord. Accountability is not only for today. It is even when we go to meet our Lord Jesus Christ. We are going to give accountability. Because the Bible says that everything that we do is laid bare before him. So whether we deceive, whether we, we do what? Everything is laid bare before. So it is only accountability that is going to help you love the things of God. Develop the fear of the Lord in you. Such that you are a person that brings God the glory. So, and it is only purity. It is only purity that is going to help you abstain from tempting influences. Many of the times we, we meet different people. And we may not be at the same level. So it is either them to influence you or you to influence them. So it is, but it is, it, if you have the purity within you, then you are able to overcome. Then you are able not to conform to the standards of this world. As the scripture tells us. Praise the Lord. Amen. As I conclude, I want us to reflect on our lives. Especially that, that heart of yours. My heart too. What is seated in that heart? Because the Lord desires a pure, clean heart. The ones that are pure in heart, they are the only ones to see the Lord. Because many times, even when we pray, you feel your prayers hitting on a rock. You feel you're not going through. We need a clean heart. It is that clean heart that is going to usher us in the presence of the Lord. And when you go in the presence of the Lord, and if you're to break through and you enter into the Holy of Holies, then what can stand before you? What is poverty? What is sickness? Name it all. What can stand before the Lord? We only need one thing. Purity. And everything else will be history. Let us rise on our feet. I, as I read this scripture for us, it is Psalm 139, verse 22 to 24. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. 
Nonya. And know my thoughts. And see if there is any wickedness. In me. And lead me in the way everlasting. I want us, I want that to be our prayer for today. The Lord, that the Lord will create in us a clean heart. That the Lord will enable us to be pure. That the Lord will search our hearts. That the Lord will search our thoughts. And if there be any wicked way in, in us, that He will lead us in the way everlasting. Because Proverbs 6, 16 7 says that if a man's way please the Lord, he even makes his enemies be at peace with him. If we are able to, to walk a, a pure life, a life that is pleasing unto the Lord, every enemy will be under our feet. Be it sickness, be, be it anything you can call it, it will be under our feet. The Lord will give us victory. Because he has said it. That if a man's ways please the Lord. He even makes his enemies be at peace with him. Let us go before the Lord. Go before the Lord and cry unto him. Ask him for that pure heart. Ask him for that clean heart. Tell him Lord create in me a clean heart. Make me a pure being. Genda maso, genda maso, ya Christo, yes. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Is the Lord who you in the name of Jesus. Just speak to him this hour. Speak to him in a minute. He wants us pure. He wants us to look like him. He wants to sanctify you and me. Remember, he's coming for a spotless church. A church without a wrinkle. That is the church he's coming for. I want you to pray in one minute that you will be part of that church. You'll be part of the number. You'll be among they that is coming for. That day that no one knows. That hour that nobody knows. That he shall find us ready. He shall find us clean. It is it's only by his blood that we are cleansed. It is only by his blood that we are made as white as snow. Lord, we surrender to you. We pour our hearts to you, our minds to you, our thoughts to you, our deeds to you, our feelings to you. Come and do something new in our lives. Cleanse us with your blood. Cleanse me by your blood. Cleanse me by your blood. Renew my heart, Lord. Renew my spirit. Somebody ask for a new. You can now tithe or pay your offer to read the better way with MTN MomoPay. It's free and easy to use. Just follow these simple steps. Dial star 165 star 3 ash and select payments. Then enter merchant code. Our merchant code is 173119. They will ask you for the amount you want to offer. After that, enter your PIN and press OK. Remember to keep your PIN secure. Your tithe or offer will go to Shalom Set Free Life Mean Buloba. Using MTN Momo Pay is free of charge.